Hi y'all, I'm Jeremy and, I'm Todd. and we are salt and pepper wine and today we are in Texas Hill Country which is one of our favorite places to be. Um, and we have some great amazing wineries, great wines and actually the foot traffic that goes through here is second to Napa Valley so there's so many people from all over that come through here. So we're doing a tasting here at Hilton Winery. This one is their 2016, uh, Hilmi's uh, 2016 Albarino. Albarino. Which is a white. There's some good stuff with Texas whites. But this yeah. is our, the Albarino, and the Albarino is a Spanish grape that we were they were just tasting, or just telling us about, so. We, you're, you're not gonna have the the, the florals like a, like a pheasant ridge on the nose. You're not gonna have the, like, like the real intense uh, smell. However, it is a very clean smell. What do you think of that? What are you tasting? Um, very appley. Uh, uh, definitely peach. Definitely peach. And actually, just a, a, that little hint of lime that all of a sudden mm -hmm. hits you right at the beginning. I'm but eating. It, but it doesn't. Lemon but it lime doesn't, citrus. Yeah, but it doesn't. It doesn't actually. It doesn't actually hit you in the front of the t in the front of the tongue. Mm. It actually hits you more in the middle of the tongue, which is. Which is actually quite, mm -hmm. quite odd when you really think about sweet. Sweet, you really think it's more in front. Yeah. Of and so one thing that we were that we learn um, while we've been here, just kind of in the whole country, is exactly what you're looking for when you are looking at a wine. And so the first thing is, you look at the color. The clarity. And you the can appearance. tell you can tell if it, if it's been filtered, if it's been unfiltered. Obviously, if there's sediment. And then mm -hmm. you can look at the size of the sediment, and you mm -hmm. can see how large or small the the filter actually is. Mm -hmm. Smell. So yeah, you smell it. What are you smelling? It's in terms of the floral, it's it's not very floral. It's not a, no, it's, it's not, not it's not a very floral wine. Which smells good though. More, more and it's not a strong smell. It's like not you a, gotta it's get not a strong really smell at all. in there to smell it. Um, And then the next thing you're looking for is the taste. Taste. So when you actually taste it, what you're what you're tasting is the next level. Of what judging is happening? Wine. Yeah. What? This, and this is what. Yeah. Thank you for this is, this is when what you're judging. When they're judged, this is what they're judging. When you're judging a wine, you're looking for four distinct parts. You're mm -hmm. looking for the, the the clarity, or you're looking for mm -hmm. what it looks like, the actual look of it, what clarity. If there's yeah. brown in it, then you know it's an old world style yeah. wine. If it's not, well, then you know it's that it's new mm -hmm. world, etc., etc., etc. And then you're looking for the smell. So uh, you're, yeah. you're smelling it. You're sitting there saying, okay, is this a floral wine? Is this not a floral wine? Does this smell like straight sugar? Does it smell like? Uh, a, 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 I mean, mm -hmm. you can you can run the gamut on smells, yeah. but yeah. so you need to take that into account. Yeah. And then the next one is the taste. What's and happening? What what's is happening, happening in your mouth? mouth? Where is it? Where is it hitting? Um, mm -hmm. Is it is it creating that sandpaper effect on mm -hmm. your tongue after it's done? Everything else, and then exactly. then there's the finish. And um, I didn't even actually know. I didn't know this until a few minutes ago. Well, actually, a couple hours ago. Yeah. But uh, 11 seconds is a is a good uh, finish. It was good, finish. good finish. So right? how long does it stay in your mouth? Does it go long longer than that? Does it go shorter than yeah. that? And judges judge upon that. Yeah. So, so those are a little our, bit of knowledge. Learn along with us. Um, so we, I'm enjoying this Albarino. Yeah. Al Albarino. Very good. Albarino. So. And it, and an Albarino is a specific varietal, so it's a single varietal. Um, wine. We're enjoying it. Yeah. The next wine that we're tasting is called a Du Zoiseau, and it's phonetically spelled how it's supposed to be said, and it's a French for two birds. Yes. Um, and it's fifty percent uh, Viognier. Viognier and Chenin Blanc. Yes. And again, we are at Hellwein. Yeah, when, when you well, so, when color. you when you look at it, it it's a uh, it's it's designed to be uh, drank cold. It's it's a it's a cold. So I smell. No. I'm getting tropical. Like when you smell this, it smells like a tropical. Like yeah, there's a lot of grapefruit, a lot of grapefruit, a lot of uh, pineapple, a lot of pineapple. Very, 
a Pops lot more punch. Yes, a lot, lot more of a lot more of a citrus taste mm -hmm. than than the Alberino. But yeah, mm. definitely, really definitely good, more though. of a definitely more of a grapefruit smell uh -huh. to it, and a lot, a lot more of your tropical fruit like what you would normally see. So naturally, your grapefruits, your a melon, definitely a melon somewhere in there. A me if you take melon and you uh, impregnate it with uh, with orange okay. juice, then that's what you'll that you'll start smelling <laughs> that. Like that's what it'll smell like. What are you tasting? Definitely, definitely grapefruit. Grapefruit is definitely one of the main ones I've probably mm -hmm. said it like 18 times already so we'll probably read it we'll probably run a counter um, <laughs> great, 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 great. Um, but it's really good if this is gonna be a good summer wine specifically for people who are red it's wine good, drinkers yeah, it's a good standalone wine mm -hmm. it's a very good standalone wine tasting is the Persephone and this is a blend of Viognier and Marsan um, and we are just really excited to taste what this one's about. Remember you want to look at the color. Oh wow yeah that is a lot of earth here. Um, I just found out crazy Snow. thing I am uh, I found out why I am not really that much of a white drink uh, white wine drinker. Mm. And it is because I like my whites to be in stainless steel. I did not know that. I just learned that. Anyways, what you're now, it's a very it's here. a very clean mm -hmm. it's a very clean wine in terms of the look. It's it's, it's very nice that way. <clears throat> when you actually smell it, yep. you're actually getting a lot of uh, kiwi. It, it, I, I would definitely say the kiwi and the uh, grapefruit are, are definitely a lot higher, um, a lot higher. Yeah, I can smell that. Taste is and definitely more. It taste is definitely more earthier. Yeah, and that's what she said. But it's not like you're drinking dirt. It's yeah, yeah. not yeah, like it's that. Not at, that all. at all. It's just um, in terms of white wines. Mm -hmm. In terms of white wines, this is more towards the uh, toward the earthy side. Mm -hmm. It only hits more in the middle of your tongue. It and, does. But then it rolls forward. When you actually when you actually sit down and taste it, like if okay. you take a if you take a, a, a decent sized gulp, like not a, not a sip, but you actually take a, 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 a little bit bigger of a gulp. Okay. Not a gulp, but you know you yes. get what I'm saying. Yeah. Then what happens there is it actually goes it hits in the middle of your tongue and then it starts rolling forward. Oh. So that, it's good. I enjoy it. I enjoy this one. Again, if you're a red wine drinker, you like this one. Our next tasting is a Viognier, um, and Viognier is the king. It's a staple white white, white grape in Texas. Yes, it is. It really is. Like you'll go anywhere. Well, I'm not gonna say all tasting rooms, but a majority of them. a Viognier because that's Texas. Tempranillo and Viognier. That's Texas. So. And she was just telling us that it's 100% Viognier, but what they did was they took 50% in um, steel, stainless steel, stainless and then they, steel. then they oaked the other 50%. And for joke. That, I wouldn't say it's a very floral, it's not a floral smell, really, very little floral smell. That is oaky. Definitely oaky. That oak is there. Yep. But what are you tasting? Definitely, well, melon, like a, like a, not, not, I wouldn't say a watermelon, actually, yeah, like a watermelon, like a, like the, a, yeah, like a, star, about... like a star, like a watermelon starburst, you gotta hit that. You, you I get, don't get you, that. No. You kind of get that hit. Oh, you don't? I don't. No. Okay, fine. Then I'm wrong. <laughs> now, you know what? In wine, <laughs> in wine, it's about... It's about what you like, what you taste. Yeah. A lot of people make it so difficult, and it doesn't have to be difficult. Yeah, no, it's like, it's okay if you like a $7 bottle of wine. Actually, one of our mentors, Bonnie, she introduced us to a $7 uh, Spanish wine, and it's delicious. So. 13, $13 was a 92 point. Yeah. Tempranillo. Yeah. yeah. And so, it was excellent. So what do you like, you know? Anyways, back to back to Hilmi now. We're back back in the United States, back yeah. in Texas. 
and actually all of these um, tastings that we're doing the grapes are coming from the high plains and so if you guys remember um, our vlog from last week high Texas high plains from where we were this is a all of their grapes that they're using for all of their wines are coming from there so go watch that video go see you know what does the Texas Hill Plains look like and get a better understanding and that'll help you understand you know all of these places that we go and they're saying that their grapes are from High Plains you can say okay I know where that's now you from. have an idea yeah, yeah. Brownfield Texas mm -hmm. uh, Terry County is, is the other place uh, Terry County Loveland um, Lubbock if you if you actually sit down and look at it and you draw, draw a hundred mile circle around Lubbock, that's where a lot of the grapes are actually mm, grown. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. To give ge geographical location. Yep, yep. exactly. So, what you're going to taste on this is, is uh, kiwi. And definitely a, li a light hint of kiwi. That's good. You know what? Texas has been going nuts about rosé. So have, we have to try it. So we have to try it. Um, there's like a rosé revolution and like, I mean, Texans have been crazy about their rosé. So we're trying to get up to speed on it. Anyways. Not rosé people, however, you know. Well, well, I mean, if the people around us are loving it, we need to know it. Um, and so Hill Me's rosé, which I'm going to look at the bottle because it's actually a blend of a lot of different grapes. Um, but it's 83% Fangiovese, 11% Morvedra, 3% Alianico, and 3% Negro Amara. And if you remember... Um, Here's the bottle, in case you're wondering. Mm -hmm. And if you remember back when we were at Eaton Hill, we had, um, we had <laughs> um, a Negro Amara that Todd was just nuts over. It's got a sweet smell to it, but it's not sweet at all. It's it smells like I'm, I don't know why I'm getting I don't know why I'm getting uh, what is it cotton candy. I I am no I'm getting it's a sweet it's like smells yeah, it's real a sweet. sweet but it's not sweet like the smell it's will dry. trick you it's it's dry the the, the smell is definitely. It has it has a watery consistency to it, in terms of you have that that feeling, a, a little bit of a feeling of taste, but not so much of a taste. Um, I don't like how not, you explain that because yeah, it's got that, a lot. Good. It's got taste. Like, yeah, it does got really a lot of taste, good. but it does. It's have, just not like a powerful punch, if that makes more sense. Right? Yeah, it's not it like a like Viognier. Like, it's not. It's yeah. not like a Viognier. The Viognier yeah. hits you. And it and it maintains a good taste all the way, or it maintains a consistent taste yep. all the way to the yeah. end. And I agree. Whereas this, the taste kind of drops down and then comes back up and hits you on the end too. But it's a really good rosé, and like yes. I said, we're we're still trying to learn rosés and what's the big coupe all about and so. But this is a good one. It's a good one. Ah, we're getting to our next tasting. <laughs> Tempranillo. Uh, yes, actually, it's the tip. But it's actually only 58% Tempranillo. Yeah, it's a blend. So 58% Tempranillo, 25% Carignan, and 17% Sangiovese. Which is, that sounds delicious. And that's, uh... It smells like it's chocolate that. goodness, like... Vanilla. Definitely, definitely hints of vanilla in there. Uh... It smells really good. <laughs> it smells really good. Beautiful color. I don't know if I... Let's see if this will work. So you can see it better. Does that help you all? That's, that's way too dark. Oh, yeah. Well, it is pretty. It is very dark. Very dark. It's very, very dark one. But, I will be honest with you, this is a very good one. You don't have too long of a finish, nor too short of a finish. Mm. A lot drier, a little bit. I'd like to say that it is dry. It is dry. Aged for 24 months um, in French oak, and yeah, you can really tell it, it's got that. It's got a lot of tannins to it. Um, 
Very good job. Last facing, and it's called politics and religion. So we're not going to talk about it. Just kidding. Um, it is a 53% Merlot and 47% Mervetra, and it is. And she said the reason why it, that it has the name of politics and religion is because it comes from two different regions. And the grape, the grape the, varietal yeah. in France comes from two different regions. Yeah. And legally, they can't, they cannot actually fuse the two. So, so if they did do it, you wouldn't talk about it. So politics and religion. There you go. Although Todd does talk about politics and religion All the time. All in the time. situations where you're not supposed to. No. Our societal society doesn't allow you to because everyone all of a sudden gets mad and pissed off and, and then we stop talking to each other which whatever Ooh, I like this one I really like this one I know I think I like it better than their tip okay. no I, I have noticed that a lot all of these all the wines here at Hilmi they're all they're all very deep in color. Mm -hmm. Very the, the reds are all very very deep. The uh, yeah. Again, I, I wish you guys could see that. It's beautiful. What are you tasting? Uh, definitely uh, definitely cherry. You definitely have the cherry notes in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, not a very fruit, not not a very fruitful wine. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I'm like, what is it that? You definitely, it's not it's not a fruity wine. Um, I would definitely put this on with a leaner steak. I would not put it up with a high marbled steak. Uh, like high marbled steak will definitely overrun this, overpower it. Um, however, I can also see it with like a, I can also still see it with dark chocolate for some odd reason now. Like, I, I, I got that now stuck that in my head now. Now that you're stuck on that. Now, yeah. now, now that I got stuck in my head. <laughs> it's a good one. So here at Homey, um, just their ta just regular tasting, they're, all of the wines are really good. You won't have to dump any of them. Um, if you're a red wine drinker, you're going to enjoy the, the white whites. Wine. Absolutely. Um, yeah. On the other side, it just depends on what kind of whites you normally drink, I think. Yes. Um, but it's all very good wines, and we really do enjoy this. 